.NET 8 and C Sharp 12 was released a couple of weeks back during the .NET Conf. So now if we have to create a new project, we can select .NET 8 and it comes with the latest version of Visual Studio. So Visual Studio 2022, but the latest update. So we can go ahead and create and everything else looks pretty much the same. It's just that it's going to use .NET 8 instead of .NET 7. In today's video, I'm going to focus on primary constructor, which sounds really interesting. And primary constructor is not new, but it is new to classes or structures. Primary constructor is already available and you might have used it when you used record type. So when we declare a record type, so here if I do a public, This is what the primary constructor is. It is basically a constructor attached to the class itself instead of creating it inside. Like if you define a normal type for data model, then you will create the class and then you will create the constructor inside of the class. Whereas for record type, and here we can provide the type. And this of course becomes by default the property. So here if we have to access, we can say new test and here as you can see, as you can see we can pass the name anything. Here I'm just passing it name. So this is how you can create a new record type. And then if you do a dot name, you can get the value out of the record type. So here we can do it's a very simple example and record type is something which I have already covered and you might have seen before but this is just to show that the primary constructor existed with record type but not with the class. And here you can see hello world which is the first right line and then it printed the name which is the name I passed here. So now let's talk about primary constructor in a class. So now instead of declaring it as record, you can just say class. And you can see it's working except that the name is not public anymore. That is the only difference. But it is taking the name here. So technically we can create an object of type test passing the constructor value because that's the primary constructor. Now let's declare this class a little bit. Now after we declared this class, the name here can be accessed internally. So if we have a public void print name, you can of course always do name and that's pretty much it and here we can now do test or print name and run this and this should result the same response as before our world name so now you can see that we can use primary constructor with the class now what is the main advantage of this? Of course, the main advantage is it's a little bit more succinct. We don't have to declare a constructor just for it. So the constructor is part of the type itself. And primary constructor, we can call it from other constructor. So if we declare a constructor here now, let's say, the constructor has certain parameter, but let's walk through this error. The error here says that a constructor declared in the type with parameter must have this constructor initialized because this already has a primary constructor, which means I cannot just declare this. I have to use something like this and I can say this. So this is going to work. Or if I have a constructor with string name, address, I can always do this dot name. This should work itself. 
So this is how we can declare primary constructor in C sharp. I find this feature to be extremely handy because it makes the code a little bit more succinct, as I mentioned before. Now let's consider another scenario on how we can use, like a lot of time we use the constructor value and we use it for properties uh, to return it, to expose it, right? So how would you do it in this case? So let's get rid of these two, we don't need this. Uh, and let's change the name to name to match the normal constructor standard. And let's get rid of this method. So here we can, if we want to, and now here what we can do is we can get rid of this and we can just return name here and here we can go ahead and say console dot console dot right line and here let's say test dot name because we expose as a property and of course we can use it so we can use the primary constructor value just like any other constructor. There is no such limitation in terms of how we use it. And of course, when we use it with dependency injection, it is going to be exactly similar. We can always use the type name and it should work. Though we, if we have to inject constructor value, then we'll do standard the way we do constructor injection with uh, different variables. So nothing changes. Honestly, it's pretty much the same as any other constructor. You can also use default values here. So we can use the default value of test. And if we have default value, then of course I cannot go ahead and create here a string address without a default value and we can see there's a squiggly here rest yeah so we cannot is the parameter must appear after all required parameter because this is a required now and this is this is not so if we remove this then it will be fine everything will work as expected so all the things that you are used to doing with constructor all of them is going to work with default constructor. Same holds true for base class and child class implementation. So if we have to create a public class, child test, for example, which takes string, name, we can always do here, I can do And I can create child class here. And here we can go ahead and do a new child test. We don't need an address. And we, we can run it the exact same way. And you can see here it's working as expected. So we can use the primary constructor just like a regular constructor. It does not impact with any of the existing feature that we know of, for example, here, we are doing the base class child class implementation. So that is all I wanted to cover for today's video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to this channel and you think you are getting value out of this channel, please subscribe to the channel. And thanks so much for watching this video.